Operating conditioning can be defined as a learning process in which the consequences which follow a response de determine the likelihood of the behaviour being repeated or not. So thus, a key distinguishing feature between operating conditioning and classical conditioning is choice. When our behaviour is operantly conditioned, we are making the choice in terms of whether to repeat the behaviour or not. And this is based on the consequences of our previous behaviour, as opposed to classical conditioning, which is a reflexive process. So when our behaviour is reinforced, we're more likely to repeat that behaviour in the future. When our behaviour is punished, we're less likely to do it in the future. Skinner devised the ABC three-phase model of operant conditioning. An antecedent is an event that precedes behaviour. And importantly here is there is choice. So then we make our choice and that is our behaviour. And this behaviour will have a consequence. I'll give you a couple of examples to illustrate what we're talking about. So the antecedent leads to the behaviour. The behaviour will have a consequence. Now in VCE we don't use the ABC language. We use for the antecedent the terminology discriminative stimulus. For the B behaviour, operant response, and we maintain the consequence terminology. So in terms of the discriminative stimulus, we can discriminate, i.e. we have an event where we can make a choice in terms of which way we go, in which way we behave. So our choice is the operant response. And this response will have a consequence which will, which will determine the likelihood of us repeating the behaviour in the future or not. So what you need to be able to do is to be able to deal with a situation like the one we have here and you need to identify the three elements in order of Skinner's three-phase model. The discriminative stimulus, which leads to the operant response, which leads to the consequence. So let's walk through this scenario. The old lady across the road asks Sander if he can mow the lawn for her. He has a choice here. He can do it or he might choose not to. In this case, he agrees to do it. And after he finishes the job, she thanks him and hands him $15 cash. Now, whenever she asks Sander to mow the lawn, he happily obliges. So in this case, the discriminative stimulus is being asked by the old lady to mow the lawn. He has a choice here. His operant response in this case is agreeing and actually mowing the lawn. The consequence of his actions is getting a pat on the back and $15 cash. So therefore, the effect on his future behaviour, well, his behaviour has been reinforced and when behaviour is reinforced, we're more likely to repeat it in the future. Let's go through another example. Zach finds some cans of paint under the house. And then on the weekend, he decides to go to school with his paint and graffitis his tag on several school buildings. He gets busted and appears before the children's court. And Zach decides to never graffiti again. So in this case... The discriminative stimulus is finding the cans of spray paint under the house. And he had, again, he had a choice. He could have told mum and dad. He could have just left them there. His choice in this case was to go and graffiti his tags on the buildings. The consequences of his operant responses of his behaviour in this case was he got busted by the police and went to court. So in terms of the effect on his future behaviour, he's been punished. And when you're punished, you're less likely to repeat the behaviour again. For access to these slides to annotate and more psych resources, check out my website, eSyc, There's no AU. Cheers.